Hello and welcome to this short webinar about how to pass the PMP with less time and money. Of course, uh, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money. So a little bit of strategy can help there. Just to introduce myself, uh, Jastun Okrahur, uh, our company Scatterwork aims to help you be successful. And we help managers by helping them with their demanding assignments with project consulting, coaching and training services. We worked in a lot of sectors throughout the world and maybe there's some other sectors that are represented today. And uh, we have many larger clients, but also smaller ones uh, right up from micro enterprises, SMEs and up to blue chip multinationals. And we've worked in about 40 different countries in the world. What we do is provide coaching, consulting and training in project management. So the coaching and consulting is to help you do the work and the training is to help you get a certificate. And uh, there are two in particular that you might be interested in. Uh, we do a monthly prime bronze project workshop twice half a day. Um, that's done online. And another one that may be of interest is the PMP where one of the formats available is two 10 evenings um, uh, over two weeks. And those that stay to the end of this event now uh, will get a coupon code at the end for a reduction on the PMP exam. So that's the virtual team. Uh, several of us are engineers, a number of us hold doctorates. We live in different countries, we speak different languages, and that adds to the value because we have many different insights from different places. This is an interactive event, so please feel free to join in with the chat and um, any messages, I'll read them out and then we can discuss them. So let's get going. So just to remind ourselves, uh, these are the things I want to talk about. What is PMP? I think probably most of you know that's why we're online. Uh, the exam requirements, again, most of us know that, but just as a reminder. And then I want to look at the study time. Um, issue, how, how can we cut down on the time? Because the time that's needed is very substantial. And then uh, I'll show you the format that we offer. In fact, it's a flexible and there are different versions of it. And then uh, we're looking at some subsi subsidies and booking links uh, where you can also get uh, reductions. So the first thing is that uh, PMP is the most widely recognized project management credential worldwide over a million holders, and it's promoted by the Project Management Institute. Now, why is it worth getting a certification? Well, just a casual look on LinkedIn, for example, for jobs in Europe, Middle East and Africa, which required PMP um, in, uh, on this date that's on the screen, showed 8,000 jobs that, that are specifically looking for this certification. So that's a very, very high demand. So the payback is, is significant. And just remember that one of the ways of uh, meeting the requirements is a college degree, four and a half thousand hours of managing projects, which corresponds roughly to three years of work. And then you have to do 35 contact hours of study. And that's the bit that we're talking about today. And uh, recently the rules were changed. And if you hold the CAPM exam, which has the same broad syllabus, but with less demand, as it were, less, um, less challenging, um, then you don't have to do these 35 hours of study. So let's talk about different ways to do the exam. And I'm looking here at saving time. Mm -hmm. So statistics show that it takes off the order of somewhere between 100 and 150 hours total study to pass PMP. So that comes from various places. Uh, it comes from people keeping a record of what they do and reporting it, but it also comes from some online courses where the material uh, is online and the supplier can check and see how many hours that, that were spent and so on. And um, a, whatever way you put it, uh, it's a 35 hour course because of the 35 hour requirement, uh, contact hour requirement uh, from PMI. And then maybe twice or even three times as much again, private study. Um, so it's a lot of time. 
And if you say 35 hours uh, course is, is a working week, well, then you're talking about a working week plus two or three more working weeks to do the study or trying to fit that into evenings and weekends and so on. So it's, it's very, very demanding. And the time can be reduced su substantially by the systematic use of proven study tools. So um, if, for example, you, you sort of learn the process as you go, then you lose time. But if you uh, leverage from existing familiarity with the exam and it says do this and do that, you can save yourself a lot of time. And probably you can uh, study for the exam with maybe 35 hours of um, formal study of a class and then maybe twice as much would probably be the best you will get. Now, there are some other formats that um, are available, and I'll just comment on them. Um, one that, that you will see in the market. So one of them is a boot camp, uh, very intensive, maybe four days I've seen um, with an exam on the last day. So if you're going to have four days and you've got 35 hours, that's four nine hour days. So that sounds to me like really, really hard going because normally a learning day you would reckon on maybe six and a half hours contact and then lunch and pauses and so on, maybe even seven or something, but nine hours sounds a bit long to me. Um, and then uh, to do the exam on the last day, you have to have already registered. But of course, to register, you have to have already done the course. So actually, to do this version, you have to have the 35 hour study before you do the course. So although it's, it may be billed as a 35 hour uh, intensive course, actually, the prerequisite is that you're already up to standard. So it's a revision course. So it's fair enough if that if that suits your style. Another option that's in the marketplace is Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, for example, two weekends in a row when you take all day Friday, all day Saturday, and then you have um, uh, uh, nine hour days and in principle, no gaps, and you get your 35, hour, well, 36 that would be. So with a little bit of gap for coffee breaks and things. So again, that's very, very demanding. It probably meets the letter of the law, um, but the problem is that when, when you study, you learn so much in the course, and then you have to learn all the rest after the course. And so you can do it like this, but then probably the amount of learning is going to be less, and the amount of extra time you need afterwards is, is probably going to increase compared to a more, uh, shall we say, a, a more normal sort of business um, approach. Another option that you'll see in the market is five days in a week. You know, we do a course and you can you can talk to us anytime with that. And then after that, you're on your own. Maybe you get the book um, you, and things like that. But basically, you're on your own. So yeah, in, in summary, a lot of these, uh, I would say that they're, they're not impossible and they might suit your circumstances, but they are actually quite demanding. So. Um, let me have a look at some of the formats that we find, and the, these are the formats that we offer, yeah? and we find them more successful. So another one is Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. Well, that's two half days, so that counts for a day, and do it over five weeks. So it's you've got more time, you know, you're at the end of the week, most of us, and uh, you do Friday afternoon and then Saturday. It's not impossible. Um, it's probably easier than doing all day Friday and all day Saturday, but it requires five weeks. So it's a more gentle learn, but the chances are that your learning time is going to be more effective. Another option that we offer is Tuesday and Thursday evenings um, over, over um, well, in, indeed over five weeks if you do two evenings a week or over 10 weeks if you do it um, one evening a week. Now, we all know from experience, if you have a program that runs 10 weeks, somewhere along the line, something happens and it makes it impossible for you to get to it. And then you have to drop out and then you have to compensate for that um, by doing private study. So it's, it's an option. Or you can do five working days in a week. The original format of the PMP exam was exactly that, was and face-to-face uh, -face 
and and that's an option some people say look i just want to do it and finish with it but actually we can offer any combination in any global time zone so uh, you know your company might say well wednesday evenings and saturday mornings or you know wednesday evenings and friday all day or whatever it is and we'd be able to put a program together for you in any time zone um, to match your need on that so one way I've just been showing you is to have a slightly more leisurely um, approach to the training so that your training efficiency is better. You know, you want to learn as much as you can per hour of study. So if you if you really push it, uh, you, you meet the hours requirement, but you probably um, hit up against the, the learning barrier. OK, so then what we do after that also to reduce your study time is quite a number of things. One of them is we have a detailed study plan and the detailed study plan, um, it it's, uh, helps you know what to do each week. You don't have to think about it. It's based on hundreds of people's experience and it's adjusted. We collect experience and feed it back in into the plan. So we know it works. And typically we suggest people go for six, eight, 10 week plan um, if it goes much longer than that, you get burdened and you get bogged down and you forget things and so on. So it's ideal to look for a, a period when you can, can do it over that. But we give you the study plan and having the plan, that itself saves you some time because uh, you, can, you can act more efficiently and, and you don't have to learn the plan or work it out yourself. We give you access, of course, to all the course material. Um, so that that's really helpful. You can always go back to anything. And we also have recordings of the classes so you can go back to them. You can access the trainers for advice. Um, we have two periods a week where you can just log in and there's a, um, a, a conference. Um, and you can ask directly, you can email. Um, and if you, you need to, you can say, look, I really need some extra help here. Could we set up a video conference? And we do that as well. So our aim is, is for you to pass, not for you to just do the course and then disappear. Now, another thing that takes a lot of time is the exam application. Um, it could, I, I suggest people budget in the worst case, maybe you know a week of work to do that because you have to pull out all the information of the projects that you, you did. Um, you have to pull out the name of the supervisor and the telephone number and things. And the reason for that is that PMI audits a number of people. We don't know what the number is, but it's probably around 25%. It's quite a few. We meet people all the time who are audited. And what they do is they take your application, they send it to the person you name and say, is this true? So to get that ready, you have to get it properly documented and then if you're clever you will send it to the person concerned and say if it comes up do you agree with this and then um, another thing is the the actual wording you only do it once but we do it all the time so we have a service there as part of this where you can uh, put your application to us and we'll go through it with you and make comments and then you can improve it so that the chances of it being accepted by PMI are greatly increased. Like we know how they work and uh, the formatting and so on. And um, we also have videos that show you how to do that. But when you've done that, we also read through your application and, and help tidy it up. We also offer that you can resit any part of a course or the entire course, if you like, for free before you do the exam. There might be something you say, mm, I wasn't quite sure about that. And um, we, we, it's one reason that we uh, deliver our training uh, fairly tightly to timetable so that if you had to say, oh, I'm going to go into day three of this course, you would actually hit the right part of it. And then another thing, all of these things are to save you time. And another one is a dummy exam to check your level, because uh, for two or three reasons, one of them is from learning, you get as much as you can during the learning face to face learning, which is online usually, but not always. Then you, you study on your own, but you have access to other people. So if you get stuck, instead of wasting time, you say, I really can't understand this. And somebody else explains it. Ah, you say, that saves you time. Mm -hmm. And then um, you do 
questions uh, for an exam and when you get to uh, the level of 75 percent uh, on our exam we know from experience that virtually everyone who goes for the exam passes it now you might ask why is this a dummy exam why isn't it sort of copy of the real one and the reason is the way that it's managed if there were a million questions in the data bank then pmi could uh, in effect leave the exam open and uh, you know you would just get some of these million questions but they don't have a much more limited um, number and obviously they don't want them copied out to the internet and people um, preparing just based on the questions they've seen and so on so when you do the exam there are very strict instructions that you can't bring paper you can't telephone out and all those sort of things so we know from experience and we talk to our own uh, participants we know roughly how the exam is organized but we can't duplicate it so we have one that we think is similar but what we do know is that if you if you pass that one then you've got a very very good chance of passing pmp and again save your time of course and then the last part of the insurance is that if you go through all of that and you fail then we'll pay the reset fee which is a few hundred dollars so most of that except the last line is insurance if you like but all the other things are things that will save time because we've got a, a, a system it's efficient you don't have to learn what other people are doing uh, you can you don't have to learn for yourself you just jump in and do it so all of that is to do with saving time and we have very high pass rates well over 99 percent uh, it's, it's really very unusual for us to have somebody who doesn't fail, who doesn't pass. So let's talk about how you organize your study time. So let's say that you do a 35 hour course, which you have to do. And then um, you, you need at least another two, uh, two weeks, shall we say, another 70 hours. So if you did nine hours a week over eight weeks, which we recommend, well, that would be four and a half hours twice. So you might say, OK, I'll do one evening and I'll do Saturday morning every week and I'll aim for to do it in eight weeks. And you, you do it, you go through, you repeat, um, you do the dummy questions, uh, you do quizzes, um, you reread the material, you watch the videos, whatever it is you find that you need to get to that level. And when you get 75% on the dummy test, we then allow you, we register for you actually to make things easier. It saves more time, by the way. Um, if you don't reach the 75, you just keep going. But we find in practice people get there. But even if you don't get there in exactly eight weeks, you probably find it would only take you a week or two more. So all of that has to do with saving time. And now what I want to do is talk about saving money. So there are um, um, a number of different ways of doing this. Um, one of them is that uh, we will give a subsidy uh, as a coupon uh, to somebody who stays to the end of a webinar, for example. And with that, uh, you can save maybe several hundred uh, euro uh, compared with the, the normal published price and we're happy to do that because it's a sort of a payback for 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 being involved and being if you like a champion of what we're doing if you go on the scatterwork homepage and look for the pmp you'll find uh, the top of it it looks a bit like this and the book now button you can click on that and when you get through to the form to the booking form um, it will ask you for this code if you put in a code it will automatically calculate the reduction that you get um, then as you can see here this is it'll show the format of this particular course so this is 10 evenings um, over two weeks so this is actually um, uh, five evenings a week so it's it's quite strenuous but it's certainly doable and then this panel here shows you how many days until it will start from whenever we did this example um, and then it shows you in universal, coordinated universal time, which is, if you like, GMT. In other words, UK time in winter. Uh, and it shows you the time, the beginning and end of each session. 
but then it reads the time on your computer and it shows the time in in your area or at least according to your computer so then you can say mm, that would fit me or or it wouldn't so you click on there to to get the booking uh, the event format and dates are mentioned in the heading and the start and end times depend on your computer's timing now um if you're an employee of a company in the International Financial Services Skill Net in Ireland, uh, you can get another subsidy. And the way that it works is that every company in the country uh, has to pay a levy for training. And this training money goes into the skill nets. And each skill net is either for a region or a, um, a branch of industry. And uh, the organization is supported by some of this money and also the participants of courses um, are charged less than it actually costs. So in a way they're getting their own money back, but if you don't do that you lose the money, but if you want your money back that you've paid, um, you do it through a skill net. So for example, we have a, a deal with the IFS skill net and um, their fee there is, is, is several hundred cheaper than it would be on the open market. And you'll find that link that uh, is the IFS skill net. And so you'll find that on our website. So if you work for one of these companies, and also there's a link here also on the website and you can click on it and you can see the, the list of the, of the companies. In fact, if your company is not in it, it might be worth the while just to apply. So that's it. So thanks very much for your participation. I hope you found that useful and um, please, uh, consider when you're planning your uh, PMP study, one is to select a, a supplier that has a style that matches the, the energy that you've got. And having a um, something that is super challenging um, uh, for a short period of time, it, we believe that it, it's not the most effective way to do it. It's better to get as far as you can with that time and then have a process that wherever you get to, you, within a reasonable number of weeks, you can get up to standard. And um, then you can get subsidies, as I mentioned, particularly if you're with um, skill nets, various skill nets have that option. And we have one of them there. And um, also, if you have a, a coupon code that you got because you came on the course, you'll also be able to um, cash that in. So I wish everyone uh, good luck on the exam and thanks very much for joining.